Welcome back to the channel and in today's Blender tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do this really cool effect with geometry nodes and Blender's cloth simulation. So we're going to just start by doing a normal cloth simulation, it's going to take us just a minute and then we'll do this really cool thing in geometry nodes where we add these little spheres and these little connecting rods and I'm calling this molecular blanket or cloth because it just looks like this bunch of molecules um, but it's just so cool and so fun to mess around with. So if you're a beginner you'll really enjoy this tutorial. I think it's really beginner friendly and it's just really fun to do. So we'll be making this animation and just doing some really basic uh, materials and stuff. So you can see here, this is the node setup. So super simple. Um, yeah, so let's jump in. I hope you guys enjoy and let's make it. So with a new scene open up in Blender, let's just go ahead and this time we'll actually keep the default objects. We'll only get rid of the light up here. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to a mesh option, add in a plane. And then we're just gonna go S and we're gonna scale this plane up and we'll go about this big, you can see over here. And um, let's just go with it selected, hold and shift and select a cube and then go control J. And we've just joined these together as one object, as you can see here. Now we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh option. We're gonna add in a plane. Let's just go G, Z and move it up. And let's go S to scale it about this big, click. And it's very important once you scale it in object mode that you go Control A or Command A and make sure to apply the scale. Then just tab inside of edit mode and with everything active, right click and go subdivide. Then go over here to your subdivide tab and let's give it something like 20 subdivisions. And that's gonna be quite dense. I guess we could probably go down a little bit. I might go with yeah, I think 15 subdivisions will work quite good. So keep in mind, wherever we have a vertex is where we're gonna have a little sphere. And then the connecting edges are where we're gonna be um, the little connectors that connect little balls, so that makes sense. So honestly, I think it looks better when you go like around 15 or less, the sort of resolution. Um, yeah, but maybe even 13, I'll go with maybe even 13, I think that'll look cool. So then let's tab back out and let's go over to our physics with this cloth selected. Let's just give it a cloth. Let's just scroll down and under the collision, just enable self collision so it interacts with itself. And then simply just select your floor and then give that a collision under the physics. And now if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, you have a cloth simulation. Pretty cool. Now that's everything done. We can really get into the geometry node stuff now. So select your cloth, go over into your geometry nodes Click new to create a system and the geometry nodes is now underneath the cloth. That matters. If this is above the cloth, this is not gonna work in the same way. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually keep our group input. We're not adding a starting object here. And what we wanna do, we wanna kind of like um, add points everywhere where there's a vertice. So we're gonna go shift A, search over here and let's just go and look for a mesh two and get a mesh two points and place it on here. And now you can see it turns them all to points. And how do we have that points? What we can do, we can go shift A, search, and let's type in instances. And let's get an instance on point and just place it on here in the cable. And I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And the cool thing is we can now take this instance here and drag on it and then type in ICO, I-C-O, and just go ICO sphere. And let's bump up the resolution to free. And now you can see we have all of these spheres, but we can grab this radius and just bring it down. And you can make the spheres however big you want, right? So I'm gonna go about something like that, as you can see, right? Looking pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we want to kind of like have these little edges that run between this. So what we'll do is we'll take the same group input and we'll drag on it here and we'll go mesh to and go mesh to curve. And then we'll drag on this and let go and let's make this curve to, and now let's go curve to mesh. And you're like wondering, well, what's the point of that? That seems redundant. And it's not actually because we can now sweep the curve with a profile. So if we actually drag in this profile curve, we can get a curve circle. Let's go for a curve circle. Let's make the resolution something like, I don't know, 12. And to be able to actually see it, what we'll do is we'll come over here, we'll go shift A search and get a join and get a join geometry. Place it on this bottom cable here. And now just take this mesh and drag it in here. 
And now it's joined, but the resolute, the radius of this curve is way too big. So let's come here to the curve circle and just bring that radius down and keep bringing it down. You can make it as thick as you want, but I'm gonna go something like that. And now we have this little connecting rods in between. And that's it. So if you wanna smooth it out, you actually have to come into the geometry node system. And at the end here, go shift a search and get a set shade, get a set shade smooth. And then shift a search and get a set material. There we go, set material. And then you can go to your materials tab, go new and let's call it metal. And let's come here to the set material and just get that metal material. And then over here, let's just come to our material. Let's just give it a value of one, bring down the roughness a bit. And let's give it a color. I'm gonna go for like a reddish pink. And that's it. So now let's go back over to our layout. Let's go over to our render settings. Let's change it from um, EV to cycles. And then go down to your max samples and let's change that to 45. And now you can go shift A, you're gonna to go to your light option, add in under your light option, a area light and bring it up. And then just go to your light properties and let's give it a strength like 300. And increase the size. And now if you go into your camera view by pressing zero on the numpad, you can always select your camera and come to the camera settings and adjust the focal length. But camera placement is kind of up to you. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. You can position your camera however you wish. But the thing here is, if we go into our rendered view, this is what we can see, right? And you can you know, rotate your light, you can duplicate your light. Honestly, it's up to you how you wanna approach that. But you can see this is what we have. So what I'm gonna do is we'll actually just make sure to save this. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. We're gonna select the floor over here. Let's just go over to our materials. Let's just go ahead and get rid of whatever materials on there, go new. And then let's come here to the base color, click on this little tab. Let's change it to checker texture. And now if you go Z and go render it again, you can see we have a checker texture and you can kind of mess around with the scale until you get something that you like. And you can also mess around with the colors, do whatever you want. So that's looking really cool. So let's now just select our cloth. Let's go over to our physics. And with our cloth option here, let's just go down to our cache and let's just come here and bake the 250 frames. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see here, how cool is that? We have a simulation. You could always, if you wanted to, for a bit more visual interest, delete the bake and you can kind of rotate it and place it like so. So you can kind of, you know, do something a little bit more interesting and then bake it again. I'm saying there's all sorts of ways you can make this kind of look cool, but you get the idea here, right? So that's it. So let's just go ahead now, make sure to save, and let's just go render, render the image, and just see what it kind of looks like. And here you have it. Really nice result. So if you wanted to now, just simply go over to your output. You can select somewhere like your desktop. And then if you want to go to your file format, make it FFmpeg video. Change the encoder to like an MP4. And then you can just go render and render out the animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And because this is such a simple one, I won't be adding it to my Patreon. I think this is a quick little project anybody can kind of knock together. But I really hope you have enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.